So in our series on the Bach inventions in uh, Czerny's edition and especially the metronome marks, the tempo indications he gave for those pieces, we are now reaching number five and number five is really interesting. If you haven't seen the first of those, I have three episodes that I made two years ago with extensive introductions. Also the fourth one is, uh, ha has a quite an extensive introduction. If you're new to this series, I'm not going to explain everything in detail here. Just go back to those episodes they're linked in the description box um, where you can find them in a playlist. So the fifth one is interesting because um, Czerny gives a, 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 a tempo Allegro Vivace which is pretty fast so it's not yet presto but 144 is exactly the number of the Hammerklavier Sonata a fugue then. Of course, the Amaclavier Sonata is a little bit more complex, the fugue technically also, I would say. But here, E flat major, uh, there is not something that you could say, like this is a normal, ordinary 4-4 four, four time. So if you would put this in the perspective of the notation of the 18th century and tempo ordinario, you will have to start from a tempo around 60 quarter notes. Now, you may say that's just your opinion, it's actually not. There is no doubt about this, that this, the second actually in this kind of temp time signature with normal 16 note patterns with normal harmonic progressions um, is actually around the second that has been documented in 18th century sources too many times. And um, I mean, even people who do not agree with what we say about metronome marks, they, they just accept that. People like Klaus Mehling, for instance, he's not particularly known to support Lorenz Guardian's work. So the second as the ordinary time, the normal time, um, I mean, that was pretty commonly accepted. It's still deep in the 19th century, actually. So 144 here is more than doubling. Now, Czerny sees this as an allegro, allegro vivace even, so with 72, if you would consider this whole bit, so half of 144, there would be quite some percentages above normal tempo. So without further ado, I would suggest that we're going to listen to um, some performances, the same nine names as last time, and of course, again, in order of slowest till fastest. Thank you. So Lizitsa again wins the competition. Um, it's maybe not surprising, as I say, every episode she mentions explicitly in the description box of her channel um, that she considers these inventions to be study material and she wants to practice it or to play it as fast as possible. So if she doesn't read the metronome mark given by Czerny in single beat, but saying that she was going after that, but if she doesn't reach that speed, we have a problem, um, I think, to solve. Also keep in mind that Czerny considers these pieces to be easy pieces. So there is the chart, copied from the Excel sheet that will go into the book. So we started with Leonard, who is almost there in whole beat. Let's say that's whole beat metronome or whole beat tempo compared to Chinese metronome mark, 144, he plays like in 70. Koopman is a little bit faster, but he is matching whole beat exactly, so 50%. I was a little bit faster, you know, 
proud of my third place. Nikolaeva, 60%, Meyer, 60%, Schiff, 60%, Schiff, 65%. Compare those tempi, uh, guys. Feel how much the tempo changes by just adding 5%. It's really a lot. Um, gold goes again to 69%, Gizing, 69%, Lizitsa, 85%. So 15% from whole bit, from single bit reading. In general, and as an average, we have 63%. That means that the nine musicians to, uh, combined have an average tempo that's 13% above Czerny in um, whole beat, but 37% below Czerny in single beat. And um, that's quite telling. So Lizitsa doesn't reach the single beat marking here in spite of the fact that she as i said before wants to play the pieces as fast as she can but we're going to uh, fix that digitally of course i'm going to share you the comparison between copeman the original recording and then the same harpsichord recording but uh, um, with audacity i sped up twice If you think this is like, yeah, this is the way that uh, I can totally see that uh, Beethoven and those people and those, oh, you know, not a problem. I mean, there is no single beat universe. I've said that so many times. I'm, 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 I, I must bore you to death by repeating that. But in Bach's music and Czernis, I mean, even though people are not going after Czernis indication, though in the case of Glenn Gold, I'm not so sure. Point is, if you consider this single beat adjusted, digital adjusted performance to be like, yeah, it's totally normal, then let me know in the comments. I mean, so many people are around Czerny whole beat. The guy was not crazy. And I'm not saying here that we should go and study Czerny's metronomarchs to discover the real authentic Bach. I'm not saying that, although I don't know for sure how far he was off. It's worth studying. And, but for sure he was close to Beethoven. And for sure he was closer to the 18th century than we. And for sure the guy was not crazy. And for sure in the 19th century they took his indications really seriously, even Chopin. So for sure he's worth studying and taking seriously. And in the case of, you know, the uh, partitas, I'm going to re-record those. Um, also to study more the temporal relationships there in the 18th century with the partitas of Bach, it's pretty complex. Um, but what he gives there as Tempi sometimes is so close to Quans. I mean, it's not always like very simple to compare, but there is something worth studying. And the fact of the matter, the matter of fact that people today playing like, if they do not consider these inventions to be study material as Lizitsa does, they are actually in the range of Czerny Holbeat is a quite telling fact. Okay, there you have it for today. Up to number six, and I'm waiting for you there. If you don't want to miss that, go into the description, go uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and go into the description box if you want to see the complete playlist. I will also link them here on screen. Go also on Patreon if you want to support us. And it's writing an insanely thick 
750 page book on temporary reconstruction that I'm about to finish or Lorenz and I am about to finish. He, Lorenz has already finished for a long time. The first draft will be done, I think, this year if this video still sees YouTube's daylight in 21. Thanks for watching. See each other soon again. Bye.